What is up, YouTube? And welcome to episode 33 of the Cows Daily. Bit late today. I, I do apologize. Normally I try and get these videos out at least before midnight my time. So technically, like, this is the next day. Um, which means I get the videos out on the end of the day here for me. I've been sort of busy, but not busy with stuff that I record or do. Like, I've been, I've been doing some research, doing some studying up, checking out other YouTube channels, um, jumping on Discords. I've been trying out a couple of different discords to find a few communities where I'm allowed to share my stuff because apparently one of them that I joined I got banned because I was not allowed to share the work that I do in a 3D printing community about 3D printing. I don't understand it. Like they said, you're not allowed self-promotion. I'm like, sure, fine, but like what's the problem like i'm not really self-promoting myself i'm sharing the work that i've done the video on my 3d printer setup like and i like it, it, i'm not gonna get into it either way like it was incredibly hypocritical their rules were just vague i mean their, their list of rules didn't even include any rule about self-promotion which was just weird i'm not gonna get into it um but yeah i have found another discord that is fantastic the guys there are awesome loads of fun 3d meltdown 3d printing if you want to check them out 3d meltdown wow it's a great community really 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 receptive i've just really enjoyed my time on there today with them um i've also been on youtube looking at other youtubers that do resin printings so i've been looking at a couple of channels in particular um nerdtronic go check him out he's got some really good videos there especially about setups cleaning procedures and methodologies i learned quite a few new things there that i will definitely be sending him a message and saying hey look do you mind if i steal steal a couple of these ideas and methods and put them in my setup video to share as well um because i'm definitely going to be using those methods they, they work great and then also um 3d print farm he left a comment on one of my videos and thank you very much i really appreciate it i went and checked out some of your videos great work um, I learned some interesting stuff, and especially about the um, reusable resin vats. Uh, I wonder if that, that, that concept would carry over to large resin printers when, you know, the FEP sheet in, like, my feet on, that runs $20 off the bat. So, you know, like, for these smaller printers, you said you were getting five in a box for 30 bucks. Like, wow, that, that's impressive. So I wonder if the that it scales to the economy of larger vats or not. Um, that'd be an interesting to find out. Anyway, so I have worked on something that I can show you guys. We're going to jump into that. That. So one of the things that I'm going to need to do is calibration because I need to be able to print a thing that is at a size based on what I design it to be and not have to bugger around every single time. From what I've discovered, a lot of it comes down to temperature and the way you set things up. If you get it just right and you can control your temperature, then it's a set and forget. You don't really have any more issues going forward from there. So because I am going to be controlling my temperature, I don't need to worry about that yet because I won't need to be worrying about that. But it will be a while before I do get that temperature control system in place. But in the meantime, I can do simple prints. I won't be able to do any of my crazy engineering things like planetary gearboxes and variable pitch propellers or anything like that because I do need absolute calibration for those things. But in the meantime, I can get my printer as close as possible until I get temperature control systems in place. Let's jump into the time lapse and check out this calibration test print that I designed up. Let me know if you guys want one in the comments and I'll see about getting it up on Thingiverse or something. So yeah.
So there you go. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you think I should upload that file onto Thingiverse or somewhere, I, I doubt it. Like there are so many different different test article things out there that do different things. Um, mine specifically, I needed to check um, calibration in the Z, X and Y axis. So that's why I have a hundred by hundred size test article. The pillar in the middle is a hundred tall and the square on the outside is a hundred by hundred. So I can calibrate what my dimension shift is based on the printing th it's settings in Cheetah Box. We'll go over that when we get to it. Um, but there's other things like um, overhangs and stuff. I just want to know for my own self, like what my resins are capable of at different temperatures, what overhangs will print. But more importantly, I have some thin wall tests. So one of those walls there is 0.25, so a quarter of a millimeter. And I would very much like to see how how that handles like it, is that super brittle is it got a bit of flex does it bend like what does that kind of thickness of skin do how does it behave um so this is just give me more of an idea of an understanding of how my resins are going to behave so i can make better designs in the future with that in mind so yeah let me know what you think um i like i said just been doing lots of research learned a whole bunch of really new stuff and look forward to it in the next phenom setup video and uh yeah so that'll do it for today's episode Hit the like button if you haven't already. Make sure you subscribe if you're not. I'm in chaos, and as always, expect the unexpected. And I'll see you guys next time. And a special thank you to all my patrons that help support the channel. If you would also like to support the channel, there's a link in the description.